Don't I know you, sir? Don't believe so. I haven't been here in many years. Name's Silas Greaves. Silas Greaves? The bounty hunter? Used to be. Ah, well, what are you doing here in Abilene? Just passing through. Got a little business to take care of. Well, sir, it would be an honor if you would allow me to buy you a beer. Hell, son, it would be my honor to drink it. I'm Molly. Howdy. I'm Dwight. That's Jack and Steve. Ben's behind the bar. Oh, I bet you got some great stories. A couple. <laughs> Any of them true? Jack, be nice. A few. What about your shootout with Henry Plummer's gang in Bannock, Montana? Is that where you started as a bounty hunter? That's what it says in this here dime novel. Don't believe everything you read in them dime novels, boy. First man I hunted was back when I was riding with Billy the Kid. You knew Billy the Kid? Damn right. That scrawny son of a bitch had no fear. Wouldn't back down for nobody. I heard he collected the tin stars off any crooked lawman who crossed him. It was a war, boy. The Lincoln County War. And Billy promised his regulators would take the life of every bastard who helped bushwhack John Tunstall. Kid had a big chip on his shoulder and a hair trigger temper. Made him dangerous as hell. It was about 30 years ago. Billy was hiding out in an abandoned farm near Stinkin' Springs. I threw in with the kid because the man I had sworn vengeance on was riding with Billy's enemies. But before I tell you why I want that son of a bitch dead, let me tell you what happened that day. I was heading back to the hideout when suddenly I had this funny feeling. Funny, haha? -ha? No, Steve. The other kind of funny. It was about 30 years ago. Billy was hiding out in an abandoned farm near Stinkin' Springs. I threw in with the kid because the man I had sworn vengeance on was riding with Billy's enemies. But before I tell you why I want that son of a bitch dead, let me tell you what happened that day. I was heading back to the hideout when suddenly I had this funny feeling. Funny, haha? -ha? No, Steve. The other kind of funny.
back. You need to stay here to keep an eye on the road. That's not fair. We're missing all the fun. I knew those two morons would never let me through. I had no choice. Who's that? Is he with us? Was it Pat Garrett's posse? Oh yeah. I heard the shots and I knew I had to move fast. Garrett and his army of deputies had surrounded the entire homestead. to help Billy and the boys out a bit. So that's just what I did. Turkey shoots from up there. God damn you! Oh. Luckily, these shooters Garrett hired weren't the sharpest tools in the shed. The right position is very important. Personally, I prefer to be on top. Oh, you do, do you? Indeed, darling. But where was I? Oh, yeah. Hello. A lot of them were saddle tramps or sod busters or drunken drifters. Looking to make a few bucks. Where'd he go? Thank you. 
heard a friendly voice yelling at me from the window. Back door! Back door. We'll cover you! Truth be told, things weren't much better behind the house. Just made the ones that were left twice as mad. They made up for their lack of skill with a seemingly endless supply of ammo. It was a bit of a slog, but I finally fought my way around the back of the house. And like that, you I was inside, dead, you none the worse for wear. I passed Dirty Dave. Deader than a rat in a trap! And upstairs, I found Billy and Charlie Bouldry. How about that? Billy looked at me and said, About time, amigo! Grab a gun and get to the window! Wait, so you were friends with Billy the Kid? Yeah, sort of. Anyway, we were surrounded by dozens of deputized shooters who wanted to do us harm. Garrett's men were dropping like flies, but they just kept on coming. When Charlie got in. They're catching us in a crossfire, shouted Billy. Get to the other side. was the better part of valor. What's that mean? It means that it was time to cut and run. They got a gallon, Billy Shelton. Get the horses and bring them round back. I'll draw their attention. <laughs> he directed that order at me. And I thought, why the hell do I have to do? But I went anyway. Dumbass that I was back then. Many would have fled in my place. But I had 
that false sense of invincibility that many young men have. Like Jack here. What are you saying, old man? Jack is just joshing with you. Yeah, he better be. Mr. Graves, please continue. Please, call me Silas, ma'am. Now, uh, where was I? You were heading for the barn. Right. Making my way past the castle of Boiling Folk. like Garrett hired a whole regiment of hired guns. Yeah, and just when I thought I was done with them, more of these hapless bastards would pop up. Oh, Finally, I had the stables within my reach. That's when I met Sheriff Pat Garrett. I read that you went toe to toe with him, sir. That backstabbing bastard with that tacked on tin star. that in a dime novel? It said he showed no fear as he took your measure with eyes like a rattlesnake. Killed him in a fair fight. <laughs> Is that what that penny dreadful said? No, boy, that ain't what I meant when I said I met Pat Garrett. So let me start again. I finally reached those damn stables. After the fight, maybe we could treat ourselves to some fried chicken. Stepped inside, and bam! Last thing I heard was Garrett's voice. That's not Billy. And go on, how did it end? End? Boy, that was just the beginning.
So what happened? Did Garrett arrest you? Yeah, after I came to. A bastard had clocked me with his colt. And the kid surrendered? When he realized there was no getting out of there alive. So they locked you up in Lincoln? Indeed they did. Sentenced me to hang right along with the kid. It's important to know that I was only riding with Billy so I could find the bastard I was after. He was with John Kinney's gang, and they were sworn enemies of Billy's regulators. Why were you after him? I owed that son of a bitch a bullet for what he had done to me and mine. Instead, all I got for myself was a goddamn death sentence. Luckily, it was right around then that I heard Billy make his move. He shot Jim Bell and a few other guards as he made his getaway. Later, they wrote that some lady friend planted a pistol for him in the privy. What the papers didn't say is that Billy helped me escape, too. My first order of business was finding a firearm. Luckily, I located Deputy Bob Ollinger's mean-ass shotgun. I saw Billy through the window, and he yelled that I should take to the rooftops to make my escape. So I did. Anybody see Billy? Oh, the son of a bitch shot Jim Bell! Hell yeah. That scattered gun was like a double-barreled howitzer. It could blow a man clear off his feet. You hardly had to aim the damn thing. The kids escaped raised a huge ruckus.
from roof to roof like a damn alley cat. I followed the planks where I could, but... Some of that wood was slippery as hell. The whole town was up in arms. And suddenly, I was a fugitive. So that bastard you were after, what did he do? He did me and my family a grievous harm. But I knew if I was ever going to find him, I would need to get my ever-loving ass out of there. I tried to be stealthy and sneak my way past. This town doesn't have a moment's peace. Where did he get you? You! But hell, if they weren't all waiting for me. Apparently, some of them thought I was Billy. <gasps> Me and the kid shared a certain similarity in build and color. I was just glad I had Deputy Bob's mean ass shotgun. Whizzing by my head, it was like everyone in Lincoln wanted to put me in the ground. I knew I needed to find a horse. Though I never did have a great fondness for those four-legged grass eaters. Smelly, sweaty, ungrateful beast. We prize them too high, if you ask me. Do this. Put down your weapon! 
Where was the kid while you were busy getting shot at? Gone. And that's when it occurred to me why Billy set me free. could be a hapless decoy and draw attention while he snuck out of town. I knew if I made it out of there in one piece, no one would put a price on my head. Because everybody in Lincoln would be dead? No. Because they all thought I was Billy. And all that blame would fall on him. Meanwhile, Deputy Bob Ollinger was organizing a posse to put me down. He was already a mean son of a bitch, but he was doubly pissed that I stole his mean-ass shotgun. Anyway, it was me or them, and the only way forward led me straight to perdition. But the cards were dealt, and I had no choice but to play them. Get back! 
I found what I was looking for. The stables on the edge of town. I guess Billy saved your ass, taking out Bob Ollinger the way he did. Billy didn't kill Bob. Well, sure he did. He dispatched him right after he shot Deputy Bell. No, sir. Because Bob came right up behind me, angry as hell that Billy had lit out. Hello, Bob, I said. I think you better let me go. And he says, I don't think so, boy. Not with my shotgun. So we stood there in the middle of the street, eyeball to eyeball. He intended to kill me, and I knew I had no choice but to defend myself. Killed him in a fair fight. Everybody saw I had no damn choice. Well, Lincoln got a mite depopulated that day. Pat Garrett gunned down Billy three months later, so his escape was all for naught anyway. So where'd you go after Lincoln? Mexico until I realized nobody was looking for me. I ended up taking a job at the Rurales. The Mexican Rurales? I was hired to help them track down the Cowboys. The most vicious outlaw gang in Cochise County? Curly Bill Brocious, Johnny Ringo? Led by old man Clanton himself. They must have paid you a pretty penny to take them hombres on. Not really. But truth be told, I had my own reasons for going after those boys. Thank you. 
So was the bastard you were after now riding with the cowboys? Roscoe Bob Bryant was his name. Oh. But no, this time it was a different bastard I was after. The aforementioned Mr. Ringo. And yes, he was working for old man Clanton. 